The following is an exclusive presentation of the Carolina Panthers and the NFL. Go, let's go get a win today, man. Play hard, play for each other. Let's go do this thing. Let's go win on three. One, two, three, win! The Panthers were looking to stop their six-game skid with a win versus Indy. Let's try and get ourselves an early Christmas present today. It ain't gonna be easy. It's a great team we about to face. Unfortunately, it was more of the same as Carolina fell to the Colts. Gonna try to get three, and he does! Only Pilardi remains, and he's not gonna get him! Plus, Santa Cam comes through with some Christmas cheer. You do a casserole, you just got him clumped up real drippy. And the Panthers put on a holiday experience for those in need. <laughs> This plus much more. Get ready because the huddle breaks now. This is the Carolina Panthers Television Network. And you stepped into the huddle. Brought to you by Power Home Solar. Welcome inside Panthers Huddle. I'm your host, Jacinda Jacobs. Well, the 2019 season has been a roller coaster ride for Panthers fans. The ups and downs from new quarterbacks, new coaches, and everything in between. So, in this week's Bojangles Rewind, despite all of the challenges, there was one goal, and that's to come back from Indy with a win. As well as size and type restrictions. Indianapolis, Indiana, home to Lucas Oil Stadium finally referred to as the house that Peyton built. In 2019, the Colts have experienced their own quarterback drama and have had to change course at the position, similar to the Panthers who saw Cam Newton go down to injury. And now Kyle Allen replaced with Will Greer. The Charlotte native would have to perform on the road for his very first start in the league. A daunting task for even the most well-prepared signal caller Dick, this is a surreal moment for Will Greer as he's about to make his first NFL start for his hometown team. And nothing can prepare you for your first start other than getting in there and getting the plays rolling. Extra blitzers creep up, and here it comes. All out pressure. Quick out right side to Moore, and he can do no more than a yard. A quick three and out turned in by Will Greer and this Panther offense. And Michael Pilardi will come in to kick. And the punt. Decent. Some hang time. Hines at the 24. Good move to make the first man miss to the 30. Up the middle, 40. 45, 50 to the 40. Finally brought down at the Carolina 36. My goodness. And Hines, with a brilliant punt return, sets the Colts up. D.Y. Hilton lines up in the slot, and the pass is caught. Stop short of the goal line, bringing up fourth and goal. Be ready for change. Go for it on fourth down. Be ready for change. The Colts are going to go for it. Quarterback sneak, reset. Got it. Scores right up inside. And taking advantage of that 40-yard punt return by Naheem Hines. Olsen right, more to the left. Samuel to the right. Now Olsen in motion to the near sideline. Career throws a little high on the end break, 34-yard line, and a Panther slow to get up DJ. more at the 34. My gosh, he got hit hard. A couple of three outs, and Moore is shaken up as well. DJ Moore. Helmet off, DJ Moore being sort of steered over to a seat. So fourth down and seven, and Pilardi kicking again, and Himes goes back. Hines returning the last punt, 40 yards. Tight spiraling punt, driving punt. Back goes Hines. Hugs the ball against his body at the 16. Fakes middle, comes to the near side. 25-30, 35-40, across midfield. Fakes Pilardi, and he'll, he's going to score. 20, 15, 10, 5, left pylon. He took it to the house. Just the, the struggles continue for the Panthers. It's like, let's see how quick we can get ourselves in a hole, same as last week, you know? It's been a hot mess so far for the Panthers. It was almost identical to the week before against the Seahawks, with the Panthers being down two scores after their opponent's first two touches. And with their leading receiver knocked out of the game, it was a hole that would only get deeper. 
Uh oh, line drive punt returnable from the 29 to the 30, 35, 40. Uh oh. To the 45, cuts to the right, to the 50, wow. 40, 30, <laughs> 20. Hines is going to do it again. Touchdown. Two in one day. So it was all Colts. It started with an 84 yard punt return for a touchdown, and they never let up. It was an ugly day at the office. The Panthers suffered their seventh loss in a row and limped into the last week of the season against the divisional rival Saints. So the Colts will kneel this out. It was not a good day here for the Carolina Panthers, to say the least. And this has been a very disappointing season into the season. And then here in, in the Lucas Oil Stadium, just to get striped by this club. Colts 38 and the Panthers 6. on the list. Just last year, Graham Gano lined up for a 63-yard field goal as time expires. It's this week's 25-season celebration. From 63 yards away, wow. Graham Gano to win the game. Six seconds left. Snap. Spot. Gano's kick is long. It's end over end. And this kick is good. Oh, he did it. He did it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mick, I don't believe it. 63 yards. Oh. That is incredible. Gano had room to spare on a 63 yard field goal. For the record, that is the second longest kick in NFL history. Now, unfortunately for us, there's no last second field goal that's going to turn around our season. But interim head coach Perry Fuel is keeping everyone focused. He has one big task coming up this weekend against the Saints. Check this out as we go one-on-one -on -one with Coach Fuel. Well, Coach, this past week we've been talking about this balance of evaluating and trying to find a win, and you were leaning toward obviously both, but we got to see some evaluation of some young guys, starting on offense with Will Greer. What did you like from Will Greer, and what have you talked to him this week about trying to improve upon? Uh, definitely liked the way he found Christian McCaffrey, yeah. checked the ball down uh, when they took his reads away um, up the field. Uh, I like the way he tried to distribute the ball to his receivers. What happened was uh, DJ Moore, one of his mm, primary, yeah. was injured early in the ball game, so it took a weapon away from him. So uh, there were some very good positive things that Will did in the ball game, and we'll continue to grow with him. You got a lot of different scenarios and situations in that game, and even though it's not good to be behind like you guys were there at the end of the game, for a young quarterback to be in that situation, having to throw the deep ball, can he learn from that very quickly to be able to make an adjustment going into this week? I think Will will learn from that yeah. very quickly. Uh, when there's some options out there on the field that he, can, that he will see, yeah. and if he just takes that option, he'll benefit and he'll grow. Well, that was on the offense, but on the defense, there was a lot of different personnel out there as well. Jermaine Carter, really the main one that got a bulk of the snaps that he's not used to, of course, with Shaq Thompson out. What'd you see out of Jermaine? A uh, young guy with a lot of passion, trying to go out and, and, and fill Shaq's uh, shoes. Um, and really, he did, a, he did a good job, but uh, he really played with a lot of passion, played with a lot of fire. Uh, there are good things to come with that young man. When you've talked to these young guys, even after a disappointing loss, what are you gathering from them of the opportunity that they are getting here at the end of the season? Uh, I'm really gathering their love of the game, their passion for the game, and their, their want to or their will to want to be better as football players. The young men, has, they, if they have a little tear in their eye, if they have a little, you know, a little disappointment where they really care about the game and that they, they care about their performance, you know you've got a good player. So how do you approach this game with the Saints that already played one time this year? They, they've been on a roll here. What's the, the message and the mindset going into this game at home? Yeah, it's a one game season. Um, and we have a chance to win one football game and there's nothing we can do about all the other football games of the past. We have a one game season for 2019. And if we win that one game at the end of the year, we'll leave with a good taste in our mouth. What is the biggest threat that the Saints bring to town? 
Oh, gosh, the biggest threat. Is, well, it's Drew Brees, <laughs> Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're 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 rolling. They're rolling. They're 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 a formidable offense that's high high powered, and they're playing great defense too. Yeah. Well, I know this getting ready for this one game season, but this this week was a little bit different. It was Christmas, everyone. Did you enjoy Christmas at all? Get some time with your family, or did the players get a little bit of time off? Uh, first, I really enjoyed Christmas. Okay. I got a chance to hug my family. Okay. I got a chance to get some kisses and hugs. Uh, so I need I needed a little love after <laughs> yeah. after a, a three game yeah. uh, losing streak and uh, and I got a lot of love okay uh, and the, so what we did for the players this week was uh, Tuesday uh, was a work day mm -hmm. and Wednesday we gave them Christmas off yeah. so that they could spend that with their family and then we went back to work on Thursday and Friday getting ready for the game this weekend we appreciate you sitting down with us glad you enjoyed Christmas uh, thank you so much coach hey thank you thanks. Still to come on the huddle, we break down the rival Saints. Closed captioning for the Panthers Television Network is provided by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose and Throat Associates, helping you enjoy the sights and sounds of the NFL all season long. Now, back to Panthers Huddle, brought to you by Power Home Solar. The New Orleans Saints are just rolling this season. They just won the NFC South and Drew Brees continues to break records. But this is the same team we almost beat just a few weeks ago in the Superdome. The Panthers have what it takes and the guys break down what we need to do to beat the rival Saints. Kevin, not all that long ago, back in week 12, this Panthers team nearly went into New Orleans and beat the Saints. And we know how good the Saints are going back to the postseason again. They've kind of dominated this division for a while now. But what were the Panthers doing that were allowing them to have so much success down there offensively? Yeah, I mean, you look at it, they scored 31 points in this game. Really good job for the offense. They had some solid drives. The crowd noise didn't affect them a whole lot. And watching Kyle Allen, there's some things that were done in this game that I think can translate to this upcoming game when you get them at home and possibly Will Greer getting his first home start. Yeah, all right, let's take a look at here, obviously, this Panthers team preparing for this Saints defense again. And it was Kyle under center, and really DJ Moore was the guy that he was able to target a couple times for some big plays. The first thing, the key is the protection. Is the protection there? If you can get a little bit of time for Will Greer, you are going to get a big play downfield because you see Kyle Allen do it here. Let this play go. They're able to get the play action fake here. Pause it right there. Tackles running these guys up the field. That's a pretty good job. Next thing for the quarterback, can he step up by a little extra time and find someone going deep? He does just that with DJ Moore. That's the kind of stuff that this Panthers offense has to take advantage of when you get that time back there. So maybe Carolina, if they can get enough protection up front, give the quarterback enough time. We know Will Greer's got a cannon as well. Maybe mm -hmm. try to attack him down the football field. Let's see another one here uh, in which DJ, I believe, shows his ability yard after the catch. Yep, but again, they're going to do a little play action, so the protection's going to line up pretty good as they play action to Christian McCaffrey here. As he steps up in the pocket, gets this throw to DJ, pause it there. This is the type of play he can make, or if this is Curtis Samuel this weekend, or even a CMC down the field, get it to that guy. There's speed at our receivers and running back. They can make a play, so this Saints defense it's vaunted, people talk about it a lot, but there's ways to expose it and take advantage. And look, we know how big a weapon Christian is. The guy has gotten 100 catches in two years in a row now. Yes. It's almost like, can you get in the ball too much? And there's almost there a mental block at times for a quarterback to say, look, I've gone to Christian so much already, I've got to spread the ball around, I've got to look for some other guys. When in reality, him matched up with a linebacker is always a mismatch he should be taking advantage of. So here, they set up in a formation. They look like they want to run the ball here. They got man hurts. They got Arma. This looks like a power play, fourth and one, trying to get in the end zone here. They sell the play action beautifully. Boom. Christian again free. It's a simple decision, a simply designed play. So easy. I could throw that. Yep. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, maybe I could too. The next one is kind of, that, that, so that's a perfect example of looking to play design for Christian. We're going to get him the ball. It's going to work perfectly. Here is maybe what I was talking about. Uh, maybe they should have gone to him again. As this play develops, you're going to see pressure's coming. Pause it there. Starting to close in, especially from the back side. You look around, covered, covered, covered. You got to put your eyes and think, where is Christian? You know he just came across the formation. He's out here. And Max, you're right. If this is a 
a, one guy with all this space, make the good decision here. Go ahead and get it to him and trust him to make the play. And it's not just force feeding a guy for stats. You get him the ball, it's gonna help you win. He's your best weapon. He's proven that all year long. He's an MVP candidate. I don't think you can give it to him too much. So hopefully we see a lot of him and more records get broken because he's having a special year. Fantastic year for CMC. The game plan against the Saints, get the ball to Christian McCaffrey. That's all it is. That's that that? simple. Thanks for watching. We're just getting started on the huddle. When we come back, we sit down with interim head coach Barry Fuel. This exclusive presentation of the Carolina Panthers Television Network is brought to you by Power Home Solar and in part by Bank of America, official bank of the Carolina Panthers. We all know Cam Newton wears many hats. Just recently, he provided meals to over a thousand people during Thanksgiving, and then he was named Panthers Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. But this next hat might be his favorite. It's the Santa hat. Santa Cam is back, and he's bringing presents and donations and smiles to children and charities and surrounding communities. One, two, three, yeah! We, we keep it fresh, we keep it organic, we keep it fun, spirited, and um, you know, give somebody a, a, a more reason to look forward to the holidays. So we are donating from the Cam Newton Foundation to the Second Harvest Food Bank and the beautiful people oh here my. like Miss K. Yeah. We want to donate 25000 I have a big check that I want to donate to this particular after school program for $25,000. This is our sixth year and I usually allow them to ask me questions, but I always like to throw a twist in things. So I'm gonna ask y'all some questions. <laughs> yes, man, what you cooking? <laughs> Cookie, okay, I got you. Now, do you make the sweet potato custard pie? Righteous believer of putting positive energy in the universe because it's going it's going to pay dividends for you. I have book bags for each and every person here, as well as that we're going to present a check to you guys, man, to the whole athletic department to make sure. we haven't seen much of him on the field, Cam is still a force in the community. It's that giving spirit that's contagious. Recently, the Panthers put on joy to the Carolinas at Bank of America Stadium. It's a holiday experience for children and families who are in need. So the program provided toys, new shoes, free haircuts, health services, food, and so much more. It's our Coke Community Spotlight. <laughs> All aboard, all aboard the Panther Express, all aboard. Hi guys, are you excited to be here? Tonight is our first annual uh, Joy to the Carolinas event. It's just the opportunity to really engage with um, folks in need in our community and it's something that you can tell is bringing a sense of joy, but certainly to the families that are here this evening. There's no I in team. This could not be done without everyone here, and I love them for that, and this community, and the Panther family, they're amazing. Hello, world. This is why I do what I do, man. To have the opportunity to have more, uh, to give to the less fortunate. This is, this is what I live for, it makes my day. You ready to go get a toy? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Love and 
giving and family. It's such a great family atmosphere in here. And uh, I just love it, man. You have to take a picture in the snow gold. Look. You go in there, it'll be so much fun. Oh, that's spider! Well, I believe God's blessed us uh, to be in the position we in so we can bless others. That is really, you are doing such a good job. I highly recommend this guy. His name's uh, Frederick. having the much help that you need. It's, it's just a blessing to have people that's able to help you out when it's time like this. Give me five. We got this. Merry Christmas. Thank it's you. so nice meeting you. I mean, just seeing the smile of the kids and the excitement of the parents to see their kids so excited is everything. Well, we've run out of time this week, so on behalf of our entire Huddle team, happy holidays to you and yours, and happy new year. We'll catch you right back here next week on Inside Panthers Huddle. You've been watching the Panthers Huddle, a copyrighted presentation of the Carolina Panthers and the NFL.